friend, welcome to Everyday Imperfect, where we share ways to blend our faith, as imperfect as it is, into our everyday. We know that there will be times when we have bad days and hard questions, and we want you to know it's okay to have imperfect faith. We have a perfect God. And it may sound a little simplistic, but if your faith needs a little boost today or every day, sit back, crank those AirPods up, and borrow a cup of imperfect faith from us today. Let's go. Hey guys, before we jump into today's topic, do me a favor and screenshot the podcast where you're listening on whatever device you're listening to and share it to your social so that other people in your circle can find this little corner of imperfect encouragement um, here at Everyday Imperfect. And do me a favor and include the hashtag, hashtag Everyday Imperfect, and that way I can find it and we can kind of react to each other together. And I just want to thank last week, a special person, Kim Smith, shared it with the hashtag Everyday Imperfect and said she definitely needed this today. Um, that was when we were going through the podcast that talked about the danger of labels and how we can be so bound by labels that we wear. So Kim, thank you so much for sharing with your circle about Everyday Imperfect. I'm really glad that we can be imperfect together. Now on to today's topic. We are talking about today trusting God when we can't see the whole picture. And it's a special day because I also have my pastor, my husband, my best <laughs> friend, Jerry Ruiz with me. Hello. So Again. <laughs> I always love doing this because even though I tease him about interrupting me so much, he always is able to add such a good measure of biblical knowledge and humor at the same time. So I love having him here. Well, thank you. I enjoy being here. <laughs> and he has a DJ voice, so that helps too. Sorry. <laughs> so somebody was talking to me about how do you even trust God you know especially when we're going through times that we really can't see the whole picture a lot of times you know we talk about um, that when you get through the point the problem that you're having hindsight's 2020 yeah. and then you're able to look back and see how God worked everything but in the middle of it how in the world can you really trust God and I remember very clearly when Cole was a senior in high school, he was starting to go through, well, he was in the middle of going through um, some stuff uh, faith-wise and just kind of trying to find his own identity and things like that. And, he, you know, it was time to choose a college. Some kids choose their college like when they're kids or heck, junior year. Cole was not that person. I feel like he waited to the last minute. Some of them choose based on their father's preference for football teams. True, true. That's true. That or, <laughs> or where their dads went to college if it's Lee University. <laughs> true again. Yes. True again. Well, Cole decided at the last minute, he was like, well, I want to I wanna go. I think I'm going to go to SCAD. I really want to go to SCAD. And nothing against anyone who goes to SCAD. Please understand, we lived for 10 years in Savannah. And to clarify, that's the... Savannah College mm -hmm. of Art and Design. Yes, it's a Experience. very well-known, very well-respected, world-renowned yeah. art and design college. They have campuses in several places, and I think one of them is even in Paris. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. About. Mm -hmm. But um, so Cole decided he wants to go there, and um, my first thought was, okay, first that's expensive, but secondly, and more importantly to me, was I knew what he was struggling with, and I know the culture at SCAD. Yeah. And what he had been struggling with, there's no way, you know, besides God actually making a, like, visible appearance to my child, <laughs> yeah. that he would not be affected <laughs> by the culture at SCAD. Right. Um, and again, please understand this is not anything, not downing the culture there. They're a great college, but for what my son was going through, it was the wrong, I felt, the wrong choice for him. Well, culture is one of the largest influences mm -hmm. on our um, on our being. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot like atmosphere. When we talk about change the atmosphere, mm -hmm. like in a, a church service or when we're 
struggling, we put on worship music to change our atmosphere. Yes, I do that a lot. Culture is is the close kin cousin of atmosphere, and mm-hmm. it has positive and negative impact. Yep. And it's it, it's it's insidious because many times we don't even realize the impact and influence of culture that we immerse ourselves into right and it's um and we're getting way off subject here but i think i feel like it's important to um understand we are and i've heard you say this a million times and john maxwell has said this i believe and several other leadership leaders have said this that you are the sum total of like the five or six people that you hang around with most so if you are struggling in a certain area you don't want to keep hanging around people who are doing what you're struggling with yeah well the bible makes it plain it says walk with those who are wise and be wise Right. You know, it's it's about culture. It's about right. influence. So, needless to say, this mama bear was not happy about the scad thing. However, I did have enough wisdom about me to set to know not to say straight up, no, you can't go there because what would have happened if I'd have done that? I have a feeling it would have been a <laughs> magnet call to his psyche. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you would have ran toward it. And but I knew but. not to do that. So, you know, I was just like, okay, God. I'm giving my baby to you and I'm doing all the right things and I'm praying for him and all this. Well, one day we had this service and I remember it was in January, very close to his 18th birthday. And we had this service at the church and God was just moving. And for those of you who are aware of the gifts of the spirit, one of them um, could be a word of knowledge. And the Lord had given this woman that we trust a, a word of knowledge for Cole. And she pulled him aside to say that, hey, the Lord put this on my heart for you. I feel like it's for you. And she brought me with her, which I so respect her for doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, And what she was saying was, um, the Lord gave me this word for you. And he wants you to know that he has plans for you, Cole. And those plans may not be the same plans that you have for yourself. And I'm telling you, like the whole time she was speaking, I was like, yes, yes, amen, yes. Just kind of agreeing and thank you, Lord. you know, I'm like, inside when she said it may not be the same plans you have, I'm like, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But outside, it was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and then she said, and it may not even be the same plans that your mama and daddy have. And I was like, now, wait a minute. Insert record, record scratch here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, every, I was happy with everything until she got to that point. And I'm like, now, wait a minute. My plans ain't that bad. Now, hold on, but, you know, we're in church, and I really did, like, I felt like this was from the Lord for Cole, so I was like, okay, Mama Bear, you're going to have to sit down a little bit let Cole get his blessing, and um, so after, I can't even tell you what all she said after that point, to be quite honest, but after church, we had come home, um, Cole was in his room probably playing video games, you were resting in your special chair. Oh, my comfy chair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I remember standing up at the coffee maker waiting on my afternoon cup of brew. And I was just praying, Lord, thank you for this word this morning. God, let it just sink into Cole. Let him really listen to what you had to say. And please, Lord, let him know that mom and daddy's plans are not that bad, that we have good plans for him too. And it's like immediately when I got to that point, almost like I was sucker punched in the gut. Um, I could I could literally feel the air leave my body. And I heard God say in my spirit, I have plans for Cole, and you're going to have to let go of yours. Wow. And when that happened, I had to grab onto the counter to keep from falling. I mean, there is no doubt in my mind that that was God speaking to me. Mm-hmm. And I do feel like he, he probably had to do that because I can be a little bit hard-headed sometimes. So he really did have to get my attention that way. I'm not saying anything. (laughs) But I thought it was interesting, too. God, not only does God speak to us how he knows we'll understand, but he used my favorite Bible verse to get my attention on that. Oh, yeah. I have plans for you, for Cole, and you're going to have to let go of yours. Mm -hmm. Hey, friend, I just want to let you know about something that I think is pretty special. There's a new way for you to get even more out of being a part of the Everyday Imperfect family. Check the show notes to find out how you can help be a sponsor of the podcast by joining our Patreon group of supporters. There's an added bonus content that you can discover on every level of giving. Would you consider helping us to get this message out to all the other imperfect people just like us? So that was when I I felt like, honestly, I didn't have a choice. I was going to have to trust Cole. 
to my to my heavenly father trust god for cold and at that point it did get a little bit easier but gosh you still wake up and you're like well he's doing stupid stuff holy cow how how is this supposed to be god's plan how is it supposed to be god's plan that you know i have this promise and this promise and this promise but i don't see none of that right now and my son is acting crazy and i feel crazy and nothing is going the way that god promised well god's promises aren't on our timeline right sometimes we have to remember that it's like a puzzle we're given just one piece at a time and as we're working to kind of fit the right pieces in the right places and and try it this way or try it that way we feel like we have no idea what's going on because we can't see the whole puzzle we just have the pieces that we are given right then one at a time yeah it's like first corinthians you mm-hmm. know where it says now we see things imperfectly you know like puzzling reflections in a mirror but then oh, and yeah. and that then that's that's the thing that we have to hold on to is that god has a then mm-hmm. you know we we don't see the then but he sees the then then we'll see everything with perfect clarity you know we see now partially and incomplete mm-hmm. but then god's then not yes. our then god's then mm-hmm. i will know everything completely just as god knows me completely see god doesn't just know what's ahead for us he also knows us well enough to give us the strength and give us the assurance that we need in our times of complete yeah. incomplete pictures yeah. yeah so that and that's what he did for me he knew that I would keep digging and digging and digging. So he had to let me know, hey, you're going to have to get your hands off of this. And I love the fact that he used your favorite scripture to do it. Mm Because it it falls right in line with Psalm 119, Mm -hmm. where it said, your word is a lamp to my feet. Oh, my goodness. And a light to my path. I didn't even think of that. In the New Living Translation, it says it's a lamp to guide my feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the guide to my feet. See, there's going to be times in our life, especially in the Christian, living our Christian faith, we're going to sometimes be able to see our path. We, we see the what's coming. There's going to be other times where we're going to have to have that lamp of the Word of God right at our feet and trust yeah. for the for just the next step. Yeah, yeah, just one more step. Just one more step. Just enough for one more step. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So maybe instead of thinking of it as a puzzle, we can sometimes think of it as one of those dot to dot or connect the dot yeah. drawings in our little coloring books when we were kids. And as you're drawing each line, connecting one dot to the next, it looks like it really can look like a scribbled mess sometimes. But when you near the completion of that page, you start to see a picture emerge. And I could tell you're wanting to say something. <laughs> it's God's then comes into play. Yes, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because God sees the whole picture. He sees yep. the end from our beginning. And that's in Isaiah 46 and 10, if yep. you guys want to look it up. Yep. He knows how each piece of that puzzle or each mark on that page needs to line up to create what he planned for us. We just have to trust him when we don't know. Hmm. We just have to trust him. And y'all, that is hard. It is hard. I've often told people that faith is easy, but trust is hard. Oh yeah. Faith is what you can have when everything's going well, but trust is what you have to have when nothing's going well. Uh-huh. You know, but it is, it's not just, it, it's hard, but it's possible. Um, you know, yeah. And that's where our hope is found. You know, uh-huh. Proverbs 3, 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. And not, don't lean on your own understanding. So, you know, God is the God who gives us our day-to-day strength. We, that comes from him. We lean on his understanding. We lean, we lean on the fact that he understands when we don't understand. Yeah, yeah. And that is what supplies us with hope in hopeless times that's where Mm -hmm. it comes from in fact there's another scripture uh right here in romans 15 uh romans 15 13 it says may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing oh wow in believing so that by the power of the holy spirit you may abound in hope see it's in our time where we have to trust and we have to believe and we have to have that faith when we don't see that god Mm -hmm. will actually give us Mm -hmm. hope Mm, yes One of my favorite podcasters is Christy Wright, and she um, came up with this thing that, honestly, I haven't memorized because I love it so much, but um, the quote says, don't get your hopes up. Sister, he's the God of hope. Yeah. It is time to get your hopes up. And that goes right along with it, that he is the God of hope. He is doing this so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may abound in hope, even when we can't see the whole picture. Yeah. 
even when we can't. So instead of trying to wow everyone with our faith and trying to be super faithful, never doubting a, a hero of the faith, how about we just start trusting him just enough, mm. just enough for today, mm. maybe just enough to get past today somehow, or how maybe enough to get past this hour. Yeah. Maybe to get past this meal with your family and not turn it into World War Three. Trust him enough. Yeah, the holidays are coming up, aren't they? <laughs> That's right. So, and I'm reminded of one of my favorite stories. It's in Mark 9. And uh, in this particular story that you, you might remember, this is where the father brought the son who was um, having to deal with uh, demons in his body. And um, the disciples had not been successful with casting them out or whatever. Right. So he brought them, brought the son to uh, Jesus. And so Jesus was like, what's going on here? And so the father gave him the rundown and said, you know, he's foaming at the mouth, going into seizures. It'll throw him into the fire sometimes. And I'm just tired. But, you know, this father wanted his son healed and delivered. But Jesus saw something in him. Yeah where he believed that Jesus could do it. Yeah. And so when he asked, um, well, do you believe? Jesus asked him that. He said, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. Because I believe, because at this point, he had faith that God was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he had faith that God had parted the sea for the children of Israel to cross yeah. on dry land. And he had faith that Elijah had called down mm -hmm. fire from heaven mm -hmm. to prove that our God's greater than Baal. But he had seen so much of what his son was going through. He was having trouble believing, even though he knew that that's what God did in the past. He was having trouble believing that God would do that with his own son. Yeah. And I, could, I, I love the honesty of his statement. Yeah. You know, it, it, it really spoke to Jesus' heart, I believe, when the honesty of his statement, I believe, but help me in my mm -hmm. unbelief. You know, mm -hmm. and if we would learn that in mm -hmm. our times of imperfect faith, yeah, that we yeah. can just simply be transparent in our trust, mm -hmm. transparent in our communication with our Father, mm -hmm. that He will not judge us for our imperfections. That's right. That He will love us mm -hmm. just like He loved that Father. Yes, He did. Yes, He did. You see, the father could only see what he had been dealing with forever, how many years, how old that, bab that baby boy was. But Jesus could see well beyond that. Right. He had the whole picture. He could see well beyond this boy who couldn't live a normal life. And I kind of wonder if when Jesus looked at this boy and his father, did he, did he see that boy growing into a man? Mm. Maybe see the boy bringing his own offering to the temple later on instead of his dad having to do it all. Maybe even see the boy on his wedding day, seeing his bride for the first time that day. Maybe even seeing that boy becoming a father to his firstborn son. And I'm not sure, I don't know, but I do think that he could see much further than what that boy boy and definitely his father could see they just had to trust him enough for right then so that they could start to see it too and there's one more thing i want to bring out about this story what if jesus healed that little boy not just for the boy but for that father's faith too what if Jesus did that and helped that little boy knowing that that father's faith would now come to the point that he, he could say, I believe, period. What Jesus did is exactly what the father asked. Yeah. He helped him mm -hmm. in his unbelief. That's true. Jesus is one who helps us yeah. even in our times of imperfection. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, friends... I want to encourage you, whatever it is you're going through, let's just trust him enough for today. Let's don't worry about trusting him and having faith that, that he's going to see it through exactly how you want him to see it through. Let's just trust that he is big enough and strong enough to handle today for us, and we are just going to trust him with it. Amen. Amen. I, for one, am so thankful that we have Jesus Christ as our perfection, even though we are as imperfect as, as it gets. Yeah. He can be our perfect and our everyday imperfect. Amen. 
Hey friend, thank you so much for joining us on today's podcast. Check the show notes for any links and resources we may have mentioned. And please do me a big favor and leave us five stars on the podcast platform where you found us. And if you can't give us five stars, tell us how we can get those five stars. That's how other people can find out about us and the message we're trying to get out. That it's okay for us to be imperfect in our everyday life because we follow Jesus Christ who is perfect for us. Also, if you'll go to the Buzzsprout link in the show notes, you can leave me fan mail. That's basically where you tell me what you think about the show and make suggestions for upcoming topics. I can't wait to hear from you. Now please share this imperfect episode with your imperfect friends and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode releasing soon.